don't want to live next to gypsies. Two worlds that don't see eye to eye. A horse in a garage on a housing estate is not normal. Unable to live together. They're not from our community. They're humans, but they don't live like humans. Don't was on site, she don't like us in houses. He likes to be in a gas chamber and be gas. Hey Tara, it's all the same brush. Absolutely disgusting. When two cultures collide. I have nothing against travellers. I have a problem with people who don't abide by the law. Communication breaks down. You can't get no more gypsy than this, can you? Can travellers and the rest of Britain ever live together? To use the word parasite might be really hard, but in some ways that's what they are. Will relationships ever improve? We all can get on. Give us a chance, we can get on. I'd be ashamed of myself if I did this to people. Or will the gypsies and travellers be pushed even further away? This week... Oh, I feel sick. There's more to life than cooking and cleaning for English traveller Scarlett. I don't cook. So close friend Danielle's opening the doors in the world of glamour modelling. I don't even know why you're nervous, Scar. Are you worried that they're going to make you look too raunch? Irish traveller Jimmy is battling the council. We could do with being housed badly. They've no power or toilets and a baby on the way. Two months left to go. And I just hope her house better. And businessmen David and Alistair are intent on protecting their land. We know the sand pit was used as a toilet. We have got witnesses to say that people were urinating into the sand here. In Luton, English traveller sisters Scarlett and Tammy have unique views on the typical traveller way of life. I will not be a typical travelling wife. My husband comes home from work. She needs an housewife. I'm yeah. not going to be an housewife. I'm, I will not. I refuse to be an housewife. I will not slave on a man. If you want your dinner, you will go and get your own dinner. From your mum? Yes, exactly, from your mum. I think the eyebrow stuff's in that other makeup bag. Make them really dark. 18 year old Scarlett and 16 year old Tammy share a trailer on a permanent site with their family. I love my family. I'm very, very close to my sister. She's like my best friend. Do that. She looks out for me. She encourages me to do loads of things. My eyebrows need to be more arched. She's always got something going on in her life all the time. That's like every day. If someone ever said, I am the Kim K of the family, you're like the Chloe. Traditionally, girls in the travelling community grew up to become housewives, but Scarlett is about to break the mould. I wanted to be a model when I was, like, five or six and I'd walk up and down and pretend I'm on a catwalk show. I knew it was something I wanted to do. This afternoon... Hey, babe. Former Page 3 model Danielle has agreed to help Scarlett with her modelling dream. I've known Scarlett and Tammy for, like, three, four years. I feel Scarlett can be herself around me. Gorgia Danielle became friends with the girls when she was in a seven-year on-off relationship with an English traveller. What do you actually want to do? Do you want to do glamour? What is glamour modelling? Sexy. To me, modelling's not a big deal because I've been doing it now, like, 15 years, and Gorgia's always doing naughty stuff publicly. But I know that for travellers, it's different because they don't want to upset people. What can you actually wear? Can you wear a bikini? We can yeah, wear bikinis. No, what about, like, a nice lacy bra? But then a nice lacy bra is not going to go with a sarong. Yeah. So. Yeah, and you're not allowed to do that. There's certain things we can't do, like nudity, and we can't show too much. Hot pants we are. We wear hot pants, like, short. So you can do hot pants in a bra? But we're not allowed to do bra. We've got to be covered up and, like, you don't really hear many of travelling girls doing modelling. So, basically, you've got to have a little sarong round you. It's ain't covered here yet. It's not us, is it, Tammy? Any mum. Obviously, they've got a lot of respect for their mum and they need to abide by what their mum says. Not like me, where my mum said to me that she would disown me if I did page three, but I just did it anyway. Uh, well, we'll have to improvise then. Improvise. Danielle's already booked Scarlett her very first photo shoot with a top tabloid newspaper. In two months' time, Scarlett will become the first traveller girl ever to do glamour. So today they've hit the shops to see what Scarlett might be able to wear on the day so not to upset her family. You can't wear bras, can you? No. No. 
I like that, but well, like her mum thinks she's too booby. Her mum's not going to let her wear that without a sarong, is she? No, they do like sarongs in here. Mum's been really clear with what they are and aren't allowed to do. No nudity. No minge and tits on show. <laughs> Tammy knows that Scarlett will have to be careful with what she chooses to wear. Travellers love gossip. Well, I'm coming out. But you can still see your crutch at the bottom. One one thing happens in your life, just gets spreaded oh, everywhere. Like, what do you think? Yeah, it's nice. I think actual travelling people is going to, like, sit there and talk about me for doing this. And I think that's what I've got to battle. <gasps> Would your mum let you wear that on a shoot, yeah, do you think? It is, because it's not, like, it's not like, you know... Yeah. I was really surprised, because I think they've probably tried on more revealing stuff today than what they'll have on at the shoot. But Scarlett's so headstrong, like, it doesn't matter what anyone tells her, it's her life. You know what, I want it and I'm going to go and get it. You know, everyone's got a dream. my grandfather's place here in the house. In the Irish town of Cashel in Tipperary, 23-year-old Irish traveller Jimmy lives on the side of a road, surrounded by generations of his family. Well, boys, how are you? How are you? This is uh, my caravan here. Jimmy shares his caravan with his partner, Ali, and three young children. And he shares his time with his cousin, Ned. Our game who's always on hand for a game of horseshoes. Ah, boys. Oh, he's a bit of a character, Jimmy. Who's the boss? <laughs> Ned's yeah! the boss. With all the shit going on, Jimmy's still cracking an old smile. Have a mess. Uh, oh. See you later, alligator. Jimmy might be winning his game of horseshoes, but he hasn't been so lucky in the housing department. One month ago, Jimmy and his family were evicted from this site by the council. He said it wasn't ha habitable for to be living here. They pulled me out of here and pulled me over there where it would be, they said, would be habitable. On that bad binge, like that, that over there isn't suitable for any kids. Jimmy thinks he knows why he's not allowed to settle on this bit of ground. The council made a deal with some of the neighbours that no travellers live here no more. He sat in the council office for the full day, like, and he said, I'm not moving till you give me somewhere to go. He said, I'm not putting my children on the bend, he said, I'm not risking their lives with. The young family have been on the list for a council property for over six years, but have had no luck. Saddling her up, boy. They said, nothing we can do, the, there's nothing there, there's no houses available, there's nothing there. Where I am, on the bit of ground I'm on, if they were put in toilets, lit water, and a bit of electric for me, I'll be happy enough. They said, no, that can't be done. But the poor amenities are extra concerning as Ali is due to give birth to their fourth child in just over eight weeks' time. We have to worry about, is there gas, is there electric, is there... Is the generator broke? If it breaks in the middle of the night, then you're in the darkness. The heaters in here don't actually work. We have to then drag in a gas heater, which then the fumes off it. That's not good for a newborn. Two months left to go. And I just hope we're housed by then. Back in England, Elmbridge is one of the wealthiest parts of Surrey and known as the Beverly Hills of Britain. But the town has a history of unwelcome summer visitors. It sounded like chains rattling. Traveller encampments turning up on the village park. They just bombed in, just one after the other. And the residents say they've had enough. Why do they feel it's their God-given right to do what they're doing? They're not from our community. They are potential criminals. All he could turn around and say to me, it's a nice bit of gold you've got around your neck. There is human excrement everywhere. That's animal behaviour in my book. I don't want people like that here. Yes, OK, they're humans, but they don't live like humans. Timmy, I love straight lines. I love... <laughs> got to be straight lines. Local Cobham news agent and community leader David has been affected more than most. We've had a lot of antisocial behaviour, shoplifting, threats to my staff, to my customers. That has a major effect on business. David and fellow businessman Alistair decided to take direct action. We wanted a quick way to alert each other if there were some problems. And so it's much easier to use a radio, just click, talk, 
and out. We, in the past, have had um, GoPros on, on um, body braces just in, in the centre here, and that means, and they really do not like to have their picture taken. I will not tolerate crime, even if we were standing here now and some kids went past swearing their heads off. I would tell them off. Now, if that makes me a vigilante, then I am a vigilante. I have to look after my staff, I have to look after the customers that are in the shop, and I will react accordingly. Now, I will react without fear, so I will do whatever I think is necessary. We will actually sit on them, and I mean sit on them. The local settled residents have got together to force the council to act. We are becoming intolerant of tolerance. We have literally had enough. The uprising is coming. Oh, I feel sick. It's the day of the photo shoot. Sisters Scarlett and Tammy have come to London with Gorgia Danielle. Scarlett's first step into the world of glamour is for a major tabloid newspaper. They're all in here, girls. Meeting the girls there is features editor Susan. Hi. Scarlett. Hi. Tammy. Hi, girls. It's very exciting for us here at the Daily Star Sunday to have the very first traveller girl in our paper. It's amazing. Danielle's not a traveller and has no worries about bearing all, unlike Scarlett. I don't even know why you're nervous, Scar. Are you worried that they're going to make you look too raunch? No, they're not. Babe, it's a family newspaper. The brief for me today is very, very easy. It's basically underwear, lots of bright colours, as you can see, that I've got here. No black. And everybody goes to me, oh, we love black. Not today. I don't think they understand our culture. I just think their clothes are going to be too showy. I hope Scarlett just don't come off like badly. My family will be very upset. With the glamour makeover complete, it's time for Scarlett to get into her first outfit. <sighs> but it seems that the underwear doesn't comply with the rules of Scarlett's community. They're just very see-through, aren't they? Yeah, it's underwear. I don't know what to say. I need to know what you will and won't wear. I didn't get told any of this. No underwear, which I made that clear to Danielle. You know I made it clear yeah. to you about underwear. Yeah, but I got told the brief was classy. To use that's classy to me. Scarlett's just dropped the bombshell that she doesn't want to wear the knickers. So um, if you want to be a glamour model, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you only want like this to be shown, we're going to have a few difficulties. Yeah, not ideal. It's all underwear. Yeah, no, I know. It's an underwear shoot. It's a glamour yeah. shoot. She doesn't want to show her moo moo. Babe, to be honest, it's like I feel a bit cheesed off. I'm cheesed off. With him? It's like your first shoot. It's like you've come across like a diva. Like, no one will want to work oh, with you. God, that's not my fault. I didn't get told it was this. Babe, but it's glamour modelling. She's so scared of what people are going to think of her and the traveller community. People put pressure on her that she can't do what she wants to do, which I think is really unfair, but she's the one that's got to face the music if it's too revealing. It's a tense wait for Danielle and the team as stylist Marie tries to salvage the shoot. Do you like this one? I love that one. You look lovely in it, honestly. Is she looking good, Marie? Yeah, she looks amazing. Can, can I, can we see? Just come in, one of you. The first one, I want to do this with the ring. Oh, my God! Oh, my... Hello. Listen, that isn't bad at all. No. Okay. She's over worried, exactly. I right. think. Wait till you see her. Wait till you see her. Finally, Scarlett's found an outfit she's happy with. That looks great. And with some clever positioning from stylist Marie... Just come out a bit so we can see, but we can't see there. They're ready to go. In the travelling community, if you make one mistake, you know, you're, you're so and so. But it's not like I'm doing anything wrong. I'm just taking some photos and something that I want to do. Smiles, we need teeth. Teeth and teeth. Smile, lovely. That's a really strong shot. Lovely. I think I'm now like I'm just worried about what other people's gonna think and say about me because I know how it feels to be really, really disowned and talked about in a, a community and it's horrible. You really are overthinking. No, yeah, I know, yeah, no, I am overthinking. And I think when it comes out, you'll be like, oh. <laughs> Back in Cobham, local resident Gina and her daughter Holly love their Romany gypsy neighbours. 
I was actually born in Cobham and lived in Cobham all my life and have grown up with gypsies. Some of the loveliest people mm. you can imagine. But something has got their goat. It was just mass destruction and disruption. They believe this recent encampment was a different group altogether. It's the Irish travellers that yeah. invaded the recreation ground. It was over that end where the, um, the travellers broke in. It's frustrating because people think of traveller and gypsy as the same thing. What they don't realise is there's a lot of diversity within those groups. Someone said it was about 10 invasions over the past year. There's been a lot of damage to our properties. I've used the children's sandpit as a toilet. They were stealing sweets from the shops, um, causing havoc in Waitrose. It was like a big conveyor belt full of caravans. They filled this cars. area up in no time. People were panicking, they were frightened, and they were trying to come up with vigilante ways of trying to drive them out. There were suggestions about having everyone bring their cars around and just beep your horns until they go. They were just beep, 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 beep. And they were talking about trying to get a tractor down to slurry the wreck. There was all sorts. It was really... Emotions are very high here at the moment. With community tension peaking, David and Alistair are on patrol. We know the sandpit was used as a toilet. We have got witnesses to say that people were urinating into the sand here. Do you know whether the um, sandpit was cleaned or not? Now, I don't, I'm not alarming you with your children playing in there. No, 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 no. We assume it has been. We assume it has been. You were told it was? Yes. They've got toilets, they've got facilities, so they don't need to go into a public space and desecrate it. You've got human rights, I've got human rights, but when your perception of your human rights conflicts with my perception of my human rights, somebody needs to be the arbiter of the rule and set the rule. At the moment, nobody's setting the rule. It's Sunday, and Daniel and Scarlett's photo shoot has hit the press. Danielle Mason shows off her curves alongside the Traveller Prodigy Scarlet. Oh my god, it's only small. All that palaver over nothing. <laughs> she looks really nice. Like, she looks cute and virginal. Scarlet's been ringing me all weekend. Like, they basically wanted the pictures pulled because she's scared about this coming out in the paper, and it's not even a bad picture. She's so worried about what other people think. It's like, Jesus Christ, I could not live my life like that. Like, it's ridiculous. Back in Gishel, Tipperary. Releases, releases. Jimmy and Ali have survived another eviction and <laughs> had their fourth child. We could do with being housed badly. Instead of giving me eviction letters, trying to pull me out on the side of the road with the four small children, like and a newborn. It wouldn't be a hard off for him to do, is to do something for me here. Like, he didn't a lot to ask for a toilet, a bit of electric. That's most of it. It's, it's kind of sad sometimes the way it is, you know what I mean? Well, you're constantly, like, worrying about her. You're wondering, is she OK? Is she warm enough? Are they OK? Are they safe? Like, when you get the very bad storms, like, we put them all into the one bed, like, and I'd be worried if the trailer over topples or what's going to happen, like. We need a house, we deserve a house. Why should we have to worry about where we are? Yeah. But Ali has even more to fear than lack of amenities. Fellow Irish traveller and activist Mags has just heard some shocking news. I think it's about £80,000 worth of damage. About a house intended for a traveller family. No one seems to have seen anything or heard anything, which is very surprising. She's come to see the damage for herself. It's another window look. Kicked out from the inside. And people suspect it was the locals, not wanting to live next door to travellers. You know, no child or no woman did this. This was strong men and they were organised. It's just, just despicable. This is an act of hatred. This is not an isolated incident. This has actually happened across Ireland for the last 30 to 40, 50 years. Not long ago, a house burned to the ground as well. Members of the settled community don't want travellers living near them. 
but they don't want them at the side of the road either. They don't want them in halting sites. They don't want them in social housing. They want members of the Shaver community to disappear or else become like settled people, and that's not going to happen. Unlike in England, where trespass is a civil matter, since 2002, a trespassing law was passed in Ireland, making it a criminal act. You can be convicted, your caravan can be removed, and you can face prosecution. And news of the vandalism to the traveller's new house has spread. Shame. Shame, like, good house, perfect good house for someone to, like, the family is getting it, probably happy with the house. I'd say they're probably heartbroken. I'd be too afraid to move into it as well. You'd be kind of looking over your shoulder the whole time. I'm living with Jimmy six years and before that I had no problems. Like So to see kind of both sides of the story, needing traveller housing, it's completely ridiculous. With tough new trespass laws, many travellers have left Ireland for pastures new. I had a sister, um, she couldn't get housing. After a certain amount of time, she got sick of trying and she moved over to England for travellers. She think England is a lot better. Like in Jimmy's situation, really and truly had nowhere to go. This is more or less his home ground. I'm reared and bred and born here in Tipperary. And like be an awful thing to move from Tipperary to England. I only want what's best for my family. That's all I want. We just want to stick to ourselves and have a happy life like everyone else. <laughs> no, I'm not giving up, no. Still more fight me left. Not giving up. We can never change what we are. We are what we are, and that's that. So it is. Despite the drama of the glamour shoot, Scarlett is still eager to be part of the modelling world. Hello. Oh yeah, are you all right? So she's come to Danielle's to apply for a beauty pageant, Miss Swimsuit UK. Have you told your family about Miss yeah, Swimsuit? Yeah, come on. No more kickoffs. No more kickoffs. <laughs> <laughs> so let's fill this out then. Let's do it. Scarlett just needs to fill out the application form. Have you used the laptop before? Oh no, of course I haven't. I don't know. So I just like put my name. Age. Why do you want to enter Miss Swimsuit UK? Oh, that's a lot to write, isn't it? Do you want me to write it yeah. for you? We don't often get... In my community, we don't often get... Opportunities. We don't get... ah. To become... To more become noticeable. More established. Is that a posher word? Yeah, more established. How do you spell opportunities? Well, right, Pear. I want to experience more in my life than just cooking, cleaning, I don't cook. That sounds fantastic, see? Doesn't it? Ooh. I'm quite clever, No, with I? you with me travelling brain and you with your gorgeous words. <laughs> you have had such a rough ride in your community over some man, so I think you deserve... A fresh start, not thinking of the past. Six months ago, Scarlett faced criticism from her community after private details of a past relationship appeared online. I had a really, really bad, bad time in one of my relationships. Even to this day, it makes me feel like crap. A lot of people turn against me because of him. I have fake pages made of me. I had, you know, just judging. Gossip can affect young girls in the travelling community really, really bad. Really, really bad. And sometimes it even causes suicide. I feel what I'm doing is opening a new door and a new chapter for me. Like it's given me something to look forward to in life instead of keep dwelling on my past. Come on, Martin. Come on, we all got the horse, come on. In the town of Thurless, in the county of Tipperary, Irish traveller Barry lives with his wife and six children in a caravan on the side of a bridge. 
pulled in from the house, good girl. Along with eight other traveller families and around 30 horses, Barry has lived on the bridge all his life. The boys are back from the jog there. They're just back from the jog with their horses, yeah. There's one part of traveller culture at the heart of life on the bridge. Generations and generations of my people, they keep horses all their lives. That's our tradition, like. They're part of the family. Barry's way of life on the bridge has recently changed. As the council have built six detached houses, costing 1.7 million for them to move into. These are the houses that they've done, and it's a lovely project. But frustratingly for the travellers, the houses were completed with no room for their beloved horses, despite, they say, an agreement with the council. So now the contract is done. It costs 1.7 million, and they're not giving us no land for, for horses. They're the ones who pressured us to go for these houses and they give us the land that they promised us, and it never happened. To make matters worse, the traveller's decision has attracted a media storm, after Irish presidential candidate Peter Casey criticised them in the press. They want stables for the houses and an acre of land. I mean, how many people in... Oh, it's just but so They do silly. have horses that we can see. Yeah, yeah. Controversially, Casey used the situation to take aim at the whole of the travelling community. Why should they be given status over and above yourself and myself? They are seen as a, as a minority ethnicity. <sighs> they're, they're... That's a load of nonsense. You know, they're not from Roman air. They're basically people that are camping on somebody else's land. Casey's comments, along with the news of the unwanted houses, is causing even more conflict between travellers and settled people. I think that there's two sides to that story and one side is not being heard at all. That's the side of the travellers' community. We were quite happy to live where we were. We didn't need houses. A house really never bothered me, I'd, I'd be honest about it. Stand there and hold them like that there, and put your two hands in the loose. I like driving horses now. The best part of living here is we have our own property. We don't have to be bossed around and put it anywhere. We could tie a horse anywhere. Hold the reins, Pish. But, but... She hold them. <laughs> She's two years old, and ever since she started walking, she's mad for horses. When I walk up down the gate, she... A horse keeps them right, keeps them out of trouble, keeps them from the towns to getting into hassle and stuff. We couldn't afford to do it without our horses and do that to our family as well, to be honest about it. We could not do it. The controversy surrounding the story has soured the relationship between Barry's family and their settled neighbours. The atmosphere is completely changed. This whole thing is turned with our neighbours against us. Running us down very bad, to be honest about it, you know. Even Barry's eldest daughter, Eleanor, has felt the effect. At school, you can tell the people talking about you and you want to stand up for yourself, but you actually can't. You'd say something, but uh, you wouldn't want to be mean about it either to make them upset. I think it's kind of bad. In an attempt to get their side of the story across to their neighbours, Barry and his family have come up with a solution. These signs here is up for to show all the people that pass us that we didn't ask for this. We didn't want anything. They had a traditional way of life and we dragged them out of it. And we didn't provide any way of settling them in, in our community properly. Horses is, is our life. That's not something that came overnight and it's not something that you can throw away the next day. We're not giving it up. We're not giving up our culture. That's what I'm saying. We're just not giving it up. Oh, we're going to get run over. After being accepted to compete in Miss Swimsuit UK... Oh, my God, I really want to go shopping now. Scarlett and Danielle have travelled to Leeds. Hiya. We're just here for a spray tan. Tomorrow, Scarlett will be competing to represent swimwear beauty at its finest. It's up to you if you want to keep your pants on or not. I, I usually don't keep them on. Yeah. Danielle also wants to look her best, and the race to full mahogany begins. <laughs> An hour later, and suitably bronzed, but Scarlett's modern ideas a clashing with her traditional upbringing. Yeah, I'm nervous. She's worried about oh, this yeah. swimsuit she's that. got to wear. That's beautiful. You're worried that a flat might fall out or something. <laughs> am I not, I'm not allowed to say that in front of you, am I? Oh, 
What are you worried about? Like, that's a bit thin there, Did isn't it? Like, it's too white car, I don't want me mm, to be out. I what? think they got to think and all that, I'm from a travelling community. What is the fit? The way you dress, the way you act, the way you talk. The way you present yourself yeah. to a man is the way that a man will think of you. If you dress like a slut... The way a girl dresses, that doesn't mean that's who she is. For instance, today I'm wearing a short dress, but it doesn't mean that I'm always sleeping with loads of different men mm -hmm. at the end of my day. I totally understand where you're coming from, but I think behind every woman there's a man. Your, your future is about finding someone and living with someone happy. And I think a woman got to give something for a man to respect. But do you think that comes down to, like, clothing? Or is that, do you think that's just because of how you've been brought up in the, how you're involved? Um, unfortunately, it's the way the men think. I don't think all men think like that. Mm. The girls worry that a traveller man won't marry them if they look too slutty. But the way I look at it is if you love someone, you love someone no matter what they do. You know, balls to everyone. <laughs> one day I do want to get married, obviously. Yeah, but I think the right one would support you whatever you like. Thanks for my town, I love it. No problem. Yeah, thank you for mine, I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Elmbridge businessmen David and Alistair have had word through about their borough's recent injunction. The High Court has now said three years. Three years, and as I understand it now, if they're in a legal encampment anywhere in Elmbridge on one of the 150 identified sites, within 24 hours they'll get them moved. OK, that's fine. Yeah, it, it, it solves the problem, but it just reinforces the difference. In many ways it's a pity because whilst all the unauthorised encampments are unauthorised, um, there are some that actually haven't been that unpleasant. The problem with the injunction is a fairly blunt instrument. Yeah. It stops all the travellers, regardless of the behaviour of that group, yeah. they'll be moved on. They'll be moved on. I can imagine that travellers get upset by the reputation that they get, um, and they all get tarred with the same brush. The settled community gets upset predominantly because they feel threatened by people that are different to them, but doing stuff that they don't like. So the solution isn't to stop them Travelling, because I don't think you will stop them travelling. No. It's to encourage them to it's behave. Good behavior. Yeah. I've got to say that, you know, times move on and perhaps the travelling community are clinging to a bygone age that we, it no longer exists in today's society. Things die out. Injunctions will undoubtedly change centuries old traditions for all travellers that still live on the road. It means that the travelling community and the settled community will be permanently separated. Um, and I, I guess on a human level, that's just a shame. Yeah, it is a bit of a pity. But I, I've got to say, I will probably take that option. Who's that? Mm -hmm. 20 year old Scottish traveller David lives in Perthshire, Scotland. That's Con Ferry, and that camp's shot now. He fears David and Alistair are right. These injunctions could end the traditional travel way of life. If these camps keep shutting down, I can see my wee brothers and sisters missing out on a whole part of their culture that I had when I was growing up. He grew up in a house. That's when I was wee as well, look. And also in a trailer. We live in the house so that we can access schooling, but then of course when the summer comes round, that's us back on the road again. And it's really, really important to us to be able to get back on the road. And it's important for the young ones as well to be able to learn the culture and to learn the stories and the songs. And it's when we're most happy. Look, you want to show? Look. It doesn't have to be that a traveller pulls up on a camp, the locals lift the phone, the locals complain, and then the travellers get moved on and evicted. Why not instead we look at a system where travellers can go onto a piece of ground and there's bins and toilets provided. There's no mess, there's no nuisance. The travellers are happy, the local community will be happy. David knows something needs to be done, so he meets with local councils to speak up for his culture. I've been in the position myself where you just have to pull up where you can get stopped. Because otherwise, where are you going to go? You can't stay on the road all the time. So if you've not got bins and toilets provided, you're going to end up having mess because it's so difficult getting rid of rubbish. Have the travelling community got their own sort of people that go out and raise awareness? I feel like the community relations are always going to be strained if we don't break the cycle. Yeah. We want to be guided by the experts in the travelling community. 
David's also studying anthropology at Aberdeen University. I didn't want to go to university to get a piece of paper. The reason I went to university was to help my community and to make sure that the settled community could understand us better. A lot of the beliefs that the readings talk about as well. He's open about his traveller identity, despite some people's opinions. I did a talk on education and what I think could help younger travellers to get involved in education. After I'd done the talk, this woman walked up to me and she said, Oh David, you know, that was a, a fantastic talk, but you're not a real traveller. I mean, you're at university for goodness sakes. You have to laugh at these things, but it's worrying. With the changes to trespass law in Ireland, and now these injunctions in England, it seems Scotland could be one of the last places for nomadic travellers. Eviction action over camp at football coaching pitch, right? The amount of times that we've travelled to a camp that we traditionally go to, and it's been shut down, there's boulders all the way around it, and we've had to then pull up into a car park or pull up on golf courses. And to be quite honest, we didn't want to be there. It wasn't a particularly good camp. The only reason we were there is because there was nowhere else to go. If the injunctions keep going on, then we're going to see a huge level of our culture die out. If we don't work together at this point, then it will be disastrous to our community. You know, we're an oral people, and if we get rid of the places where this oral history exists, then what they're doing is they're trying to get rid of the people. I think we're at a crisis point. you've got this really dirty. It's got fake tan on it. Back in Leeds, an English traveller Scarlett's been up since the crack of dawn, as it's the day of the Miss Swimsuit UK beauty pageant. <sighs> I'm nervous. I woke up at six o'clock this morning. I was like... As her mentor, Danielle, will be supporting Scarlett throughout the day and is able to help with tough decisions. I think there's supposed to be a hoop there. That's too complicated, isn't it? I think this, because I've just had a spray tan and it makes me look really brown. So we'll go with this one, yeah? Yeah. OK. Also joining the girls is Danielle's friend, Grace. Hello, my gorgeous! How are you doing? Are we all good? Grace is UK Glamour Model of the Year 2018 and former pageant contestant, so has plenty of useful tips for Scarlett. Right, how are you feeling anyway? No, nervous. Don't feel nervous. Deep breaths. <laughs> In a few hours' time, Scarlett will be taking the next step in her modelling career. This time, in front of an audience and wearing nothing but a swimsuit. I'm worried. You're worried? About this. Oh, that's nice. Do you think it's not going to show me? It's not going to show you mini. It's not that I don't like it, because I think it's lovely and I'm sure all the girls will look beautiful in it. But I don't want to walk down there with everything on show. And I won't. She looks so good. Tonight's competition will be held at a Leeds nightlife hotspot. Hiya. Welcoming Scarlett is Miss Swimsuit UK organiser Verena, also known as Mama V. Yes, how are you? I'm a little bit nervous. Yeah, but nerves and excitement is the same thing. You're going to be absolutely fine. Breathe. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Entering Miss Swimmer is a completely different thing for me. Like, I think it's a new chance. But there is boundaries, obviously. When there's a line, there's a line. I know not to cross that line. With nowhere for Scarlett to hide on stage... I'm excited to see. It's time to see if her swimsuit is all it's cracked up to be. It was an all-in-one, eh? Oh, yeah. That's fit. That's going to go right up my arse, ain't it? I just don't want this to be out on show. No, you, you mini won't be out. It's going to look so cute. If you want to be a, a model and a glamour model no. and a fashion model, you need to be used to just feeling more confident with yourself, darling. Mm -hmm. I come from more of a sheltered background than what they do. This is kind of like quite covered up, really. Oh, God, hell yeah. <laughs> it really is like asking a Muslim to take off their scarf. It's about decency and self-respect. It's like I've got to explain it like from, from the beginning to the end. Why can't you take it off? Or why have you got to wear it? Why can't you show your arms? I just, I just don't explain it anymore. It's what it is, yeah. is that what the family will think? That's what she's of worried course, about. I've got yeah. you, I've got you. Think you'll be all right? I think it's just self-respect. <laughs> this is show business, darling. Yeah. 
In a last-ditch attempt to retain her traveller modesty, Scarlett opts for a medium. With a bit more material, it does the job. It looks classy. It looks great. It looks great. But beautiful. Really do. I think the reason Scarlett has gone down modelling route is because she just thinks you've all gossiped about me. So she probably just thinks, well, what have I got to lose? Like, if people are going to keep saying what they want about her, then why shouldn't she just go full whack with what she wants to do? She's had so much crap from people, I just think the girl deserves a break. I just would hate that for my daughter. It's not nice. Like, girls think it's all right to, like, troll people and that on the internet. It ain't. Like, people do actually, like, end up committing suicide over it. It's disgusting. It's not nice. difficult part about growing up in the travelling community, there's rules and you know what you've got to do. But sometimes you go with your heart instead of your head. Watching Scarlett just made me really proud of her. I want her to do well, just to like be two fingers up at people that have like gossiped about her and put her down. This whole journey's made her more confident in herself, and I think that she deserves it. After three rounds of hard competition, it's time to announce the winner. <laughs> but Scarlett's not defeated. I want to tell every travelling girl, be yourself. Don't let other people bring you down. If you want to be something, you want to do something, go and get it before it's too late. And good luck with the journey with that. In Tipperary, there's still no sign of a house or amenities for Jimmy and his family. Up the road, the houses opposite the bridge remain empty. Barry's family and the council are at stalemate. And like Cobham, Nuneaton has just become the latest town to receive an injunction. Where do you want us to stop, Deb? <laughs> Even though there are many who do get on. I'll teach you how to drive. Johnson, you're a good guy. You do what you say you're going to do and you keep your word. It feels like these two groups are still as far apart as ever. I keep my distance. Would I want a gypsy transit site next door to me at myself? No, I wouldn't. These people abuse the locals threaten the locals, steal from the locals. I wonder how they'd react if I rocked up onto the steps of their caravan, pulled me flipping trousers down, squeezed one out on their steps, and left it there for their kids to walk on the next morning. How would they feel? I think they have to conform and start being part of society. They don't want us in their towns. They've come up with this newfangled law called an injunction. They want to sweep us under the carpet, they want to hide us away, separate us. This is our life, this is our culture, and we're not giving it up. We're not giving up our culture. We can never change what we are. We are what we are, and that's that. Georgians judge a little bit too quick when they know that you're a traveller. What people's got to realise is they've got to open their minds up and just get to know a traveller. If you've got travellers in your area, get to know them, and you'll see what lovely people they are. If gorgeous and travellers don't get on, it's because the gorgeous aren't willing to open their minds to get to know the travellers. Whether you're a traveller next door or a gorgeous next door, just get on with people. Do your best and get on with people. If you do get on the right side of them as a gorgeous, it's a plus thing because they'll always have your back. But if you do get on the wrong side of them, then you're fucked. <laughs> They say blood is thicker than water, but in this family, the blood is on someone's hands. Our brand new original drama, 15 Days, starts Monday at 9. 
Next tonight, the high price paid for a cocaine habit. Siblings Mark and Julie opened their extreme cocaine diary in just a bit. <laughs> 